The Exacta External Drainage and Monitoring System is a complete system for externally draining and monitoring cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, and monitoring intracranial pressure, ICP. The system includes a reusable IV pole clamp pressure scale assembly and a disposable patient line drip chamber assembly. System Setup The Exacta External Drain Engine Monitoring System must be set up under sterile conditions prior to placing the ventricular or lumbar catheter. First, attach the pole clamp assembly to the IV pole. Using the black knob, tighten the threaded bolt to engage with the pole. Slide the drip chamber bracket into the groove at the top of the blue pole clamp assembly. Clip the main system zero reference topcock to the zero reference mount on the pole clamp assembly. External pressure transducers and transducer adapters may be used to connect the Exacta system to pressure monitoring equipment. To attach the transducer adapter, Remove the blue cap from the main system stopcock. Attach the transducer adapter to the main system stopcock and follow instructions supplied by the transducer manufacturer. Patient line stopcock positions. Stopcocks are used to direct the flow of fluids within the Exacta external drainage and monitoring system. The patient line stopcock knob is marked with three arrows as well as an arm marked with the text OFF. The arrows indicate the directions of which fluid can flow, while the OFF arm indicates where the fluid cannot flow. For example, in this diagram, the OFF position is rotated away from all of the lines. This allows fluid from the patient's catheter to flow to both the main system stopcock and the injection site, or transducer adapter. If the OFF position is rotated toward the injection site, or transducer adapter, Fluid from the patient's catheter would flow through the patient tubing past the stopcock. If the off position is rotated towards the patient catheter position, fluid flow from the patient's catheter would stop fluid flow through the patient line to the drip chamber, but still allow any fluid introduced into the injection site to move through the tubing to the drip chamber. This might be done to flush an obstruction in the patient line towards the drip chamber. With the stopcock in this position, no fluid from the injection site will communicate with the patient. Finally, if the off position is rotated off to the main system stopcock, fluid can flow either from the patient's catheter to the injection site or from the injection site towards the patient's catheter. Main System Stopcock Positions The main system stopcock controls flow from the patient line stopcock to the transducer adapter or dead end plug and onto the drip chamber. Like the patient line stopcock, the main system stopcock is marked with three arrows, as well as an arm marked with the text OFF. The arrows indicate the directions of which fluid can flow, while the OFF arm indicates where the fluid cannot flow. For example, when the OFF position is rotated away from all of the lines, the fluid from the patient line stopcock is allowed to flow to both the transducer adapter, or dead end plug, and to the drip chamber. If the OFF position is rotated toward the transducer site, or dead end plug, Fluid from the patient stopcock will flow to the drip chamber only. If the off position is rotated toward the patient line stopcock, fluid flow from the patient line would stop, inhibiting flow to either the transducer site or dead end plug or to the drip chamber. Finally, if the off position is rotated toward the flow chamber position, fluid from the patient line stopcock flows to the transducer adapter or dead end plug, but is inhibited from flowing to the drip chamber. Priming the patient line. Begin by rotating the patient line stopcock handle, inscribed with the off indicator, toward the main system stopcock. In this position, saline will flow from the patient line injection site to the short section of patient line tubing only. Using a 30cc syringe filled with preservative free normal sterile saline, access the patient line stopcock injection site and fill the patient line towards the short section of tubing that connects to the ventricular catheter. Ensure the line is fully primed and all air bubbles are removed. Rotate the patient line stopcock 180 degrees so that it is off to the portion of tubing which connects to the patient's catheter. Now fluid can be pushed from the injection site in the direction of the drip chamber. 
prime the patient line all the way through to the drip chamber. Ensure all air bubbles are eliminated from the patient line. Priming the external pressure transducer. If you are using an external pressure transducer, it will need to be primed as well. Make sure the patient line stopcock is positioned as shown so the fluid can be pushed from the injection site in the direction of the drip chamber. Rotate the main system stopcock so that it is off to the drip chamber, allowing fluid to be pushed to the external pressure transducer. Using sterile technique, loosen or remove the end cap on the transducer. With the syringe still connected to the patient line stopcock, push the sterile saline solution through the inner tubing of the transducer and ensure that all air bubbles have been removed. Replace the end cap on the transducer. Once the patient line has been completely primed, ensure that the patient line stopcock is left in a position where it is off to the portion of the tubing that connects to the patient's catheter. This technique will keep the priming fluid trapped in the patient line. Ensure that fluid drains from the flow chamber into the drainage bag. It may be necessary to manipulate the drainage bag connection line or drainage bag one-way valve to establish drainage. Once priming is complete, drain any remaining fluid from the drip chamber into the drainage collection bag. Finally, shut off the flow path below the drip chamber. Leveling the Exacta system. If using the laser leveling device, press and release the power button, using care not to point the laser beam into the patient's eyes. The beam will appear for 30 seconds once activated. Using the bubble levels located on either side of the laser level device, adjust the alignment until the bubble rests in between the parallel lines. Once the laser is level, loosen the black knob on the pole clamp to raise or lower the exacta drainage system to a height such that the laser points to the correct landmark on the patient's head or lumbar catheter exit site for lumbar drainage. Setting the pressure threshold. Raise or lower the drip chamber to the pressure setting prescribed by the doctor. The prescribed pressure number should be aligned with the white plastic wings on the drip chamber bracket. Tighten the drip chamber locking screw. Zeroing the pressure transducer to atmospheric pressure. Before zeroing the transducer to atmospheric pressure, it is important that two conditions be met. One, the drainage system should be level with the patient. Two, the tubing between the transducer and the top of the drip chamber must be completely filled with fluid. Start by turning the main system stopcock off to the patient, but allowing communication between the transducer and the drip chamber. Lower the drip chamber until the white plastic wings on the drip chamber bracket are aligned with the zero position on the pressure scale. Push the zero button on the bedside monitor and the transducer is now zeroed to atmospheric pressure. Once the pressure transducer has been zeroed, raise the drip chamber back to the prescribed setting. Finally, adjust the main system stopcock so it is turned off to the transducer, thus allowing fluid flow from the patient into the drip chamber. Connecting the ventricular catheter to the Exacta system. To connect the ventricular catheter to the Exacta system, Set the patient line stopcock handle inscribed with the off indicator toward the patient, cutting off flow from the patient catheter. Note, it should already be in this position as a result of the priming process. Remove the patient line end plug and attach the catheter to the lure adapter. Be careful to avoid introducing air bubbles into the line. Ensure that the drip chamber is set to the pressure level as prescribed by the physician and is locked into position by tightening the thumb screw. Draining CSF. To drain CSF, position both the main system and the patient line stopcocks as shown. Monitoring pressure with the transducer. Position patient line and main line stopcocks so that the fluid flows to the transducer adapter as shown.
monitoring CSF flow. Set patient line and main line stopcocks to allow CSF to flow to the drip chamber. Close the drip chamber stopcock to stop flow to the drainage bag. Record the fluid accumulation over time per the milliliter graduations on the drip chamber. Sampling CSF. CSF can be sampled at the drip chamber injection site. To sample CSF, close the drip chamber stopcock to stop flow to the drainage bag. Clean the septum of the injection site with isopropyl alcohol. The Xacta system hydrophobic filter. The Xacta drainage system is designed with a hydrophobic antimicrobial air vent. If it gets wet, the system will still vent properly. As a result, the filter will not clog if it comes in contact with fluid when the system is laid in a horizontal position. Removing, replacing, and emptying the drainage bag. To remove the drainage bag, begin by ensuring the stopcock below the drip chamber is off in the direction of the drainage bag, preventing fluid from escaping while the bag is disconnected. Next, clean all contact surfaces with isopropyl alcohol. Unhook the drainage bag from the white tabs, which secure the drainage bag to the system mounting panel. Loosen the lure lock fitting above the drainage bag by rotating it counterclockwise or right. Once loosened, rotate the drainage bag connector 90 degrees clockwise or left. Pull down to disconnect the drainage bag. To replace the drainage bag, begin by cleaning all contact surfaces with isopropyl alcohol and allow to air dry, usually 30 to 60 seconds. Then, with the drainage bag rotated 90 degrees, insert the drainage bag connector into the lure lock fitting and twist it 90 degrees counterclockwise or right. Tighten the lure lock fitting over the connector by lowering the hub while rotating it clockwise or left, being sure to finger tighten only without using any instrumentation. Secure the drainage bag to the system mounting panel by placing the white tabs through the holes at the top of the drainage bag. The drainage bag can also be emptied using a syringe by accessing the port on the bottom of the drainage bag. These instructions are not intended to replace the Xacta external drainage system instructions for use. Please refer to the product package insert for instructions, warnings, precautions, and complications. For more information, contact your Medtronic Neurosurgery sales representative or refer to www.medtronicneurosurgery.com.